In this video, we're going to define the idea of an external direct product of groups and do a couple of examples. So let's start by assuming that G and H are groups. So let G and H be groups. And for now, I'm going to assume that G and H have different operations because of the different groups. Technically, they do have different operations. So let's say G's operation is represented by dot. That's like regular center dot, not the dot that we use for group action. And then H is represented by star. Its operation is star. OK, so G under dot and H under star are groups. So here's how we define the external direct product of G and H. So this is a definition. OK. The external direct product of G and H, so that's what we're defining, and that's going to be written as G cross H. This is the group. whose set of elements is the Cartesian product G cross H, uh, hence why we use that symbol, the Cartesian product G cross H, which is, as always, the set of all ordered pairs G, H, where G belongs to G and H belongs to H. So that's the set of elements. And the operation is defined as follows. So here's how the operation is defined. If I have two elements of this new group, uh, so two ordered pairs, G1, H1, and then what do I want to use for the, uh, for the group operation here? I think that just to have a different symbol, I'm going to use a dot with a circle around it. Okay, so we'll call that the group operation circle dot. So G1, H1, circle dot, G2, H2. So the way that we multiply any two elements of our Cartesian product is to do the following thing. We just multiply component wise. So we do G1 dot G2, comma, H1 star H2. And the reason we're doing dot here and star there is because this operation takes place in the group G, which uh, has the operation center dot. And then this operation takes place in the group H, whose operation is called star. So that's how we operate on two elements of the uh, Cartesian product. And this is called the external direct product of G and H. Now, one thing that I should mention is uh, I said that this is a group, but why is it a group? To show that this is a group, and that's definitely something we should do, To show this is a group, we need to accomplish four things. We need to show that this operation here really is a binary operation. We need to show it's associative. We need to show that there is an identity element, and we need to show each ordered pair has an ordered pair that is its inverse. So first, to verify closure, <clears throat> well, uh, if G1 and G2 belong to G, and H1 and H2 belong to H, then we know that G1, H1, circle dot, G2, H2 is equal to G1 times G2, H1 star H2. And this is still in G because we know dot's a binary operation on G. And we know this belongs to H because star is a binary operation on H. So this definitely is an element of G cross H, the Cartesian product. All right. so. When we operate any two elements of G cross H, we get an element of G cross H. Therefore, circle dot is closed. Or I guess I should say G cross H is closed under circle dot. That's really the proper way to say that. Okay, number two, associativity. All right, well, let's suppose that I have three elements, G1, G2, G3 belonging to G, and H1, H2, H3 belonging to H, then, well, what do we got? If I take 
g1, h1. And I think at this point, I'm just going to compose elements without writing circle dot. If I stick two of these together, you could probably infer that I'm operating using the, uh, using the operation circle dot. Okay, so the question is, is this equal to g1, h1 times the product g2, h2, g3, g3, h3? Well, this is equal to, uh, how do I define this anyway? Well, the thing in brackets is going to be g1, g2, h1, h2. And again, we should infer the correct operations there between the g's as a dot, between the h's as a star. And then I need to compose that result with g3, h3. Well, when I do that, I'm going to get, let's see, my, <clears throat> my first component is here and here. So in my product, I'm going to have g1, g2 multiplied by g3. And then the second component, I'm going to have h1, h2 times h3. But then by associativity, that's the same thing as g1 times g2, g3. And when I say by associativity, I mean associativity in g and in h. I don't know that it's associative in g cross h yet. That's what I'm trying to prove. But I know that g and h each have an associative operation. And then that's going to be equivalent to and I'm going to I'm going to just skip a step here because I think you can see how this is going to develop after this, but you could probably work out the remaining step yourself. That's going to be equivalent to G1H1 times the product G2H2 G3H3. Okay, so once I know that, I know uh, let's see. Sorry about that. I know that circle dot is associative. Okay, and once I get through that, the rest is a little bit less tedious. For the identity, what, is, what do you suppose that the identity for G cross H would be? I claim the ordered pair identity for G, identity for H, is an identity for G cross H. Okay, to show this, Observe that for any G and G and H belonging to H, 1G, 1H times G comma H, well, that's just going to be 1G times G and identity for H times H, and that's equal to G comma H because 1G and 1H represent identities for G and H respectively. And by the same reasoning, that's also going to be equal to G H times identity for G, identity for H. And if I were really writing this as a proper, uh, nice, beautiful proof, I would probably do this as a separate calculation. I would start here and then show that I end up back here. I'm just abbreviating this by saying if you were to calculate this, you would get the same thing. And then finally, inverses. Uh, let's suppose G is in G and H belongs to H. I claim that G inverse, H inverse, and notice the order there. The order doesn't switch around or anything. This is an inverse for GH. Okay, why is that? Well, I know that GH times G inverse H inverse, if I just multiply component wise like I'm used to, I get GG inverse HH inverse, and that is equal to 1G, 1H, which is the identity for G cross H. We showed that previously. And if I do the same thing the other way around, I get G inverse G, H inverse H, and then once I have that, I know that I have the identity again. So again, I'm just using the inverse property for G and for H and sort of jamming those together. Okay, so I know that my that my G cross H has closure, it has associativity, it has an identity element, and each element has an inverse. Therefore, I can finally say, therefore, G cross H is a group under circle dot. Hooray. Okay, this video is already clocking in at about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna stop there and do a couple of examples in the next video.